Hi everybody, in this uh, video tutorial in 3DS Max, I'm going to show you how to do a very basic uh, lightning effect such as the one we're looking at here on the video screen. Uh, and then uh, once you complete that, we're going to look at a more advanced way to actually have this lightning travel along a path uh, so that you can generate moving lightning. Uh, but let's keep it simple and start here with the basic lightning uh, effect. Now I'm going to assume that you have some basic understanding of um, geometrical modeling in 3ds Max uh, as well as some uh, basics and materials so I'll fly through some of these um, steps pretty quick the very first thing we're gonna do I'm gonna go ahead and delete this one we're gonna begin with a brand new um, stage uh, scene here is I'm gonna click a line and just draw a straight line across my viewport and then just click to end the point and right click and that'll turn off the actual line. Now if you're familiar with Max you know that you can't render a line uh, you won't see anything however what we're going to do is we're going to break this line down by selecting it hitting modify and you'll see that you have under the selection tool the option to do your vertices your segments or your spline. Go ahead and select segment click on the actual line and that'll highlight the whole entire line make it red. We next want to scroll down a little bit uh, through the menu and you'll see the word divide. Next to the word divide type in 30 and then hit the word divide. What you've done is you've taken that line which was simply point A to point B and you broke up that line in various segments. Mine's a little off because I slightly curved this and um, that's okay if, you're, if your line's not perfect that's alright. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to highlight all the vertices of the line that we actually want. Now to do that you have to go out of your segment mode into your vertex mode and you'll notice when I click and highlight only the vertices that fall into my line become red. So I'm going to leave the ones on the ends solid so that they can stay in one spot. But here we go. Now, with all the vertices selected, hit your modify modify list and find noise. Now, once you apply noise, you're not going to see anything change just yet. But you're going to hit the word fractal. I'm going to turn my rough, roughness up to one. And under the strength, this is all going to vary depending on the size of the, the scene. Uh, for, I'm just going to go ahead and put 10 in there for now. And this can be adjusted once you get the feel for what kind of lightning. Do you want a real aggressive lightning up and down a lot? You want to increase that X, Y, and Z. And that's simply just pulling the noise in those directions. The other thing that we want to do is hit Animate Noise. And what that's going to do is going to change the actual line over the duration of the timeline. So now as I pull you'll notice that my line is kind of giving it that electricity effect. Now again if you want to be more aggressive you can go up and say do 50, 50 and 50 and you're going to see a much more aggressive type of electricity which is a little unrealistic. Uh, my recommendation is just keep it simple. Uh, when you're done and you're animated it'll look really good. Okay the next thing we're gonna do if we hit render right now nothing's gonna happen you're not gonna see anything in the scene. What we have to do is we have to select the actual line go back into the line settings and you will notice in the line settings we have an option underneath the word rendering that says enable in renderer. So what that's going to do is when I render it's actually gonna give that line a thickness it's going to be very thin, but it's going to make it visible. Now, the next step is to actually apply some kind of glowing material to it so that it actually has that glowing intensity. Over here, I just created a real simple um, bluish material. Nothing fancy here. I uh, Under self-illumination, I turn it up to 100. And I drag that over to my line. Now, the other thing that we're going to do here is we're going to use um, some glow effect and we have to designate a material ID channel that's unique from other materials in the scene. So to do that, you'll hold down, you should probably be a zero, 
hold down and choose a unique number. Uh, I just picked two. The next thing we're going to do is go to Rendering, Effects. In our Effects panel, if you hit the word Effects, you're going to notice here that uh, you should have a blank spot under the word Effects. I'm going to add a Lens Effect and hit OK. Underneath Lens Effect, you have several different types of Lens Effects. I choose Glow, hit my little arrow, and I put that over here and make that active. Scroll down a little bit of the ways under the Glow element, and under your Options, you need to select the Object and Material ID numbers and change those to the Material ID number that you designated to the Glow material, which in my case was 2. I could go and change that to 3. This would also have to be 3. That's telling uh, Max that anything with that number is going to glow when it renders. Finally, back in the parameters of your glow element, you have several settings. Size. The, the, the larger the size, the, uh, the larger the glow. I'm going to keep it simple. I'm going to go down to about a 1. And under radial color, you can force what colors you want to choose here. So I'm going to go with like a like a lightning blue. And then my radial, I'm going to go ahead and do like a, a very light blue, almost a white. Finally, I'm going to click back onto my timeline. And you'll notice if in some cases your line may um, not show crooked, just have to kick kick out of that vertex mode and then back into your timeline to see the thing animate. But now what I'm going to do is go ahead, I'm going to render a, uh, a picture to show you what we got. I'm going to do a steel render. I actually have it set up as an animation right now. We'll do that in a moment. But as a steel render, I'm going to hit. And this is how my rendering comes out. Now, it's not the greatest when we talk about one steel picture. But we can do some changes here. Uh, my glow is probably still too big here. I actually want to take that glow down, which is under rendering effects. Let me take it down to like 0 0.2. I'll do another render. Okay, getting a little better there. Again, it's going to be your personal preference. Now we can also go ahead and then just do a sequence and what you're going to get when you do the sequence is this line visually jumping like an electrical effect. Now that makes for a great effect but lightning sometimes travels uh, along an object. So uh, unfortunately we can't animate this thing to follow a path the way it is. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to delete that one. I'm going to show you my next option here. Out in the front view, I'm going to take my spline line here and I'm going to click and drag with my left mouse and I'm going to make a, a curved shape here. Now you could wrap this around something like an object or um, whatnot, but I'm going to have my lightning follow this path and actually animate along this path. The same procedure happens here we need to break this up into various pieces. So again, as a review, I'm going to modify segment. In this case, I have multiple segments, so I'm just going to hold my control key as I select the three. Scroll down to divide. I got 30, I hit divide. It breaks it up into multiple places. Jump back into my vertex mode. Again, I'm going to select what I want. Holding my control key, I can go ahead and select additional regions. Apply noise. Fractal. Roughness at 1. Strength again, I'm going to probably stick with 10. That worked for me before. That might be a little aggressive. I'm going to take it down to 5 and 5. Heck, I'll even go two and two. Doesn't have to be as dramatic because 
with the with the animation of it moving, it's going to obviously um, add the effect in there too. And hit animate noise because we still this this line is going to shake and rattle just like the original one. The difference is is we are not going to make this one visible in the rendering. Instead, we're going to create um, our lightning bolt out of a cylinder. So I'm going to make a very small cylinder. And um, I'm going to go ahead into my properties, cut my radius down to like one, and maybe make my height a little longer. But the key here is that we need more height segments. I'm going to choose 50 height segments. Now, when we zoom in, you'll notice here that we have all these. And the reason why is we're going to bend this cylinder to follow that path. And those points are sort of like knuckles where um, if you don't have them, you're going to have one straight line following that path where we want this thing to bend and contour to that path. Next up, we can go ahead and take our material and drag it to that object. And we're going to use a modifier here called Path Deform. So we select the cylinder that we're going to have be the lightning bolt. And in our modifier list, you will see the very top, we have a World Space Modifier option. Choose Path Deform, not Patch, but Path Deform. And make sure it has the WSM after it. The next thing we're going to do is hit Pick Path, and we're going to select our blue lightning bolt. Notice how our line goes all kind of crazy. Hit Move to Path. Now what you've got here is this line is forced onto here. It's almost like a loft. But the percent allows me to control the animation following along this line. So I'll give you an example here. I'll start off my screen, hit Auto key, pull this to the end of my animation, and up my percentage so it comes all the way off. And we'll just we'll stop right here. How about that? Now I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to do a rendered sequence here. Just 100 frames. And what I'll do is I'll pause my video while this is rendering. And then at the conclusion of the rendering, I'll, we'll preview it. OK, we finished up. And this time I actually took out the line. So I'm going to go ahead and play that video back here. And sure enough, I got this random lightning flying through the sky following a path here. So two different ways of creating lightning. Um, one is more stagnant, where the other one uh, gives you a little bit more dynamic uh, motion. But for the most part, it's just a matter of going in and tweaking the strength to that uh, object or the line based off of your preference. You can also change your glow color to anything you want. You can make it green lightning, purple lightning, white lightning, uh, whatever the case is. But this makes for a real nice enhancement in your scene. Um, and it, it definitely adds to the professionalism of your work. Hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you in the next lesson.